coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. Falco Explorer completes Phase 1 testing. Advanced aircraft company NAB's NASA tilt wing contract. And Canada issues big fine for drone operation. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Falco Explorer completes Phase 1 testing. Leonardo has completed the first phase of flight testing for its upcoming Falco Explorer drone. The aircraft now moves on to the second phase of the campaign as part of the company's Be Tomorrow 2030 plan. The Explorer will be the largest UAV ever made by Leonardo. The company says it has everything it needs for a successful, combat-ready UAV platform, from sensors and aeronautics to software and control. The Falco Explorer will be the first medium-altitude, long-endurance-class uncrewed system to be built exclusively with domestic European technology, one Leonardo expects will be just as popular as its Falco Evo. The smaller aircraft operates with a number of international customers, with thousands of hours of flight time under its belt, both civilian and military. The next phase for the Falco Explorer will take place with the Italian Directorate for Aeronautical Armaments and Airworthiness. They will help certify its compatibility with Stanag 4671 with a series of increasingly complex flights. Once certified, Leonardo notes the Falco Explorer will be able to fly over populated areas, significantly expanding its scope and allowing it to operate in support of public safety and civil protection missions. And after the break, H3 Dynamics and Highlight embark on H2 powered airships. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyLeader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Whether you're charting a steady course or pushing for the ceiling, Hartzell Propeller has been elevating flight for over 100 years. It's in our passion for engineering and research. It's in our dedication to testing the limits of performance and creating propellers that are as safe as they are sexy. Now, together with our dedicated family of companies, we're propelling the future of aviation. We are Hartzell Propeller, built on honor. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. H3 Dynamics and Highlight embark on H2 powered airships. H3 Dynamics and French airship developer Highlight have joined to create long range, sustainable, and quiet uncrewed airships. Until now, the type has almost exclusively used traditional combustion engines for propulsion, a change right up H3 Dynamics' wheelhouse. With their hydrogen-powered systems, the brand hopes that Highlight's new breed of airships will provide operators with a long-range, zero-emission option. Highlight and H3 Dynamics began their joint work earlier this year, waiting until their first successful hydrogen electric flight test campaign to successfully wrap before announcing the partnership. Multimodal Hydrogen Airport Hub White Paper Published the Vertical Flight Society has published a forward-thinking white paper positing a multimodal hydrogen airport. In the document titled Multimodal Hydrogen Airport Hub, the Vertical Flight Society sets out to propose a repeatable on-airport hydrogen hub, initially with a ground vehicle fueling station and expanding subsequently to an airport-based hub supplying multiple modes of transportation. Presently, approximately 10% of U.S. transportation greenhouse gas emissions are attributable to aircraft operations. Predictive models suggest that number could increase to over 20% by 2050. General Atomics tests NATO spec sensor pod. 
General Atomics Aeronautical Systems has flown the latest spec of their NATO pod, evaluating the package at the Yuma Proving Grounds, Arizona. The NATO pod is a joint project between General Atomics and manufactured by Senair Aerospatial in Spain. Development was driven by General Atomics in the hopes that the pod would open up new markets for their MQ-9 series, giving international customers a flexible, scalable, certifiable enclosure with the structural features to host wide-ranging mission systems. The pod meets both DEFSTAN and STANAG certification standards for airworthiness. Hermes, Pratt & Whitney Partnership Announced Hermes is developing a trio of hypersonic aircraft. In pursuit of its ambitious goal, Hermes has taken on powerful partners the likes of the United States Air Force and NASA. So allied, the company has developed a series of autonomous aircraft for purpose of vetting Inquit technologies and addressing urgent national security challenges. On December 20th, Hermes announced that it had selected Pratt & Whitney's F-100 turbofan engine to serve as the turbine portion of its combined cycle hypersonic engine to which the company has ascribed the apposite moniker Chimera 2. And that was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Advanced Aircraft Company nabs NASA Tilt Wing Contract Advanced Aircraft Company has been selected to develop a Tilt Wing prototype UAV for NASA. The aero-activated uncrewed aircraft will make considerable use of 3D printed materials and lightweight alloys throughout the development process, from rapid iteration all the way to small-scale production. The company promises that the aircraft will offer a simpler, more robust tilt wing configuration than existing manned aircraft, thanks to the lack of any necessary passenger equipment or space. Bill Fredericks, founder and CTO of AAC, says, quote, Aero-activated tilt wing configurations offer benefits over conventional configurations, but also introduce significant design challenges. Careful design of the center of mass location of the wing body, aerodynamic center of the wing body, and attachment points to the fuselage are critical for establishing a stable equilibrium point to ensure safe and reliable operation." End quote. Paul Allen, CEO of AAC, says, quote, Advanced Aircraft Company is proud and humbled to design and build tilt-wing prototypes for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. This contract further solidifies AAC as the global leader in tilt-wing configuration of uncrewed aircraft." End quote. And after these messages, Canada issues big fine for drone operation. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at aviationsafetyresources.com. Welcome back. Canada issues big fine for drone operation. Rajwinder Singh pleaded guilty to the charge of operating an aircraft without a permit, netting himself a 10,000 Canadian dollar fine. His drone operation fell under Section 2-3 of the Aircraft Access Regulations of the Canada National Parks Act, which ensures that all parks are no drone zones. The statute has been gaining more attention this year, particularly after an embarrassing run-in with a UAV in September that grounded firefighting operations for more than an hour. The aircraft working on fighting the uncontrolled Chetham and Wildfire were halted from flight operations after an unknown drone was spotted flying in the paths of their drop sites. The incident evidently wasn't prevented by Transport Canada aviation regulations that state no aircraft may fly within a 5 nautical mile radius of Wildfire. 
Even with the regulations, drone pilots, seemingly increasing in number each holiday season, continue to operate where they please. Under such circumstances, Singh's charge makes sense. Transport Canada is attempting to get some eyeballs on the law, build awareness that unprofessional drone operations can have consequences, and notify the public that they're looking out for unauthorized flights. Those flouting the Canada National Parks Act on its regs are subject to a court date in Jasper, which may lead to a fine of up to 25000 Canadian dollars. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.